Okay, the mayfly. Um, should be called a June fly, maybe, because it's more of a June fly, a June insect, than a May one. It generally hatches and is about a couple of the first two weeks in June. Um, not many in our area, only Ogmore. There are the few odd ones. Um, I'm not convinced I've seen them on the Ogmore. Uh, they've been too far away for um, definite identification. And it may have been March Browns, but we don't get many March Browns anyway, uh, so I don't know. On the Wenny, there is a sparse hatch, uh, so if you, if you want to see uh, a mayfly, you, you, you need to go to the, to the Wenny, really. Now, a quick uh, background to it. Uh, it's a waterbred fly, what we call an upwinged fly. The natural has three tails, but we generally tie it with four or five because some break off. And um, it's first hatched from a nymph. But when it hatches from a nymph, um, it's called a dun. Or the other name for it is the green drake. Um, it's also called something else, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. Oh, imago or something like that. Uh, anyhow, it gets carried downstream by the current while it's drying its wings. And providing it's not being taken by a trout or, or other fish, really, um, after a few clumsy attempts, it flies to riverside bushes where it, um, it gets some shelter. Riverside trees or bushes get some shelter. Now, fly into these uh, areas it's a very dangerous time for it because it um, it could get uh, taken by birds chaffinches love it uh, swallows swifts we don't get so many swifts in that around now as they weren't around not around as they were when i was a boy on the aweni fortunately we've still got some sand martins who uh, who take them and i'd like to see that However, after a day or two, it goes through another metamorphosis. And this is absolutely wonderful because it now transforms into a beautiful, perfect insect. And it's ready to breed. We call this the spinner. Or this is a sort of what the boys locally call it. But um, I think technically it's uh, called the male is a black drake and the female is a grey drake. Uh, but we tend to call it the spinner because... You will see it flying up and down like this, and it looks as if it's spinning. Uh, when they swarm in, they go up and down, up and down. And, and I, I wonder if that's where the name came from. The difference between a dun and a spinner is easy to determine because the dun has dull, uh, lustrous wings. And the spinner, when it's now ready to breed, is, is very glossy and a beautiful insect. I'm going to tie it with wings. Um, but a hackled fly is more generally used nowadays. I've got some here. Uh, these are the fruits of my endeavours. And can you see the one on the end? It doesn't have a wing. Um, and you, you'll probably notice some of the bodies are slightly different colours. I'll come to those as we, as we go along. Uh, I'm going to tie it with wings because if you don't want the wing, you can just, uh, you can just leave it off. Um, I like a parachute hackled version. Uh, I have great faith in it, but I'm going to do the standard pattern today. Now, the hook I'm using is um, a size 8, sorry, it's a size 10, Kamazan B170. Uh, it's a light wire hook, and it's it's okay for, for a dry, it's a big, biggish hook for a dry fly, but it, it's okay. Um, you can either, either use that or um, a, a clink hammer size 12 is also very good for, for this fly. And some of the ones I showed you uh, have the clink hammer hook. Um, lately, or the last sort of five years or so, maybe ten, there's been a tendency, wrongly in my opinion, to tie it with a small hook and a detached body. Um, I've, I've tried that. I've, I've got some which I tied years ago, but I find they don't hook as well. And when they do, the trout take them okay and they look very good, but they don't sort of hold on to the fish uh, quite as well as I as I like. Um, okay, silk. I'm going to use a black silk. 
but quite honestly you can use any colour silk. This is, this is one fly that will take a variety of uh, colours uh, and I'm, uh, to be quite honest with you I have often used the hackle, hot orange hackle. I, I found that very good really but it doesn't look very natural but I was told to try it and I did and I've got to be honest I found it pretty good. Okay now I'm going to put on the tail and the tail to start with is um, cock pheasant tail fibers. Uh, this is a piece of cock pheasant. I, I cut it down and you can see it's been well chopped about. The mayfly has a long tail and it has three tails but we generally uh, put on four or five or something like that because some get broken off as we uh, fish it and it's easy to remove some if, it, if you don't like the look of it. If you find it gets, uh, it's, uh, it's got too many. It's a longish tail, so I'm going to put it about there. I'll do a sort of pinch and loop to take him down to the, to wind down to the bend. Now, some of the guys use what are called fibbets for the tail, and they're a bit like um, bristles on a, in a paintbrush. I've not really tried that. Um, I've not tried those fibbits because I've got so much natural material and I prefer to go with that. Okay, now um, I'm going to put a rib in and the rib is um, just a piece of hurl. But before that, I, I said to you about this tail. The tail, it should be spread out a bit like this. I don't know if it really matters, but there is a way of doing it, and this is the way I tend to do it. I once once I put the tail in, I look at it and sort of roughly split it. It's not easy to split this because there's five looks like five tails. Well, that doesn't matter. Um, three one side, two the other doesn't really matter. Now this is a piece of peacock hurl that I'm going to use to help me to split the tails. To give that split tail. Now I just put it around the bend and I bring it up in between. I don't bring it up tight. Just bring it up gently like that. A couple of winds. Gentle winds. Two. Draw it if you want to. And it sort of parts the tails. Now that's just one way of doing it if you want to do that. But if not, you can just um, carry on with it. It may not make a lot of difference. Okay, I'm, I'm going to remove this lot. Okay, now, <coughs> pardon me. I said about the rib. You can use a black floss or a, a piece of brown yarn like this. This is what I'm going to use because uh, the rib looks okay on this fly. Now you may see with that peacock hurl, just underneath the bend, a little bit of the peacock hurl showing. That doesn't matter at all because it could be uh, imitating an egg sack of the, of the uh, fly. I've just put that rib in. I don't know if you saw how I did it. I just bent it down around and brought it up underneath. Okay, now that's the rib on. I'm going to give it a wind down to tie it in. I don't want it to twist over. I'm trying to keep this body fairly even and not lumpy, which isn't always to do, always easy to do when you tie a lot of stuff in by the tail. Right, now that's the rib. Now the body. The body is going to be foam. I'm going to use white foam. You can get these sheets like this. Uh, I, I bought this from Dunelm and they come in a, a good pack for about a fiver. And all these colours here that I've selected, because there must be 15 or 20 of these, and these have been cut in half. So um, you can use any of these for the mayfly, because the mayfly can be greeny or yellow or fawn 
but I'm going to do a white one today to uh, because I think it may stand out and um, so what I do with this and you can see where I've been cutting little bits off it in places so I just cut a strip off like this just I wonder if this is going to be in camera I'll see what I can do I just run the scissors up like this and get about say two inches and as I come to the end I taper it off I'm going to put it here because it'll just fall on the floor just bear with me a second and this is this is the type of thing this is what I've got okay so I now tie this in by the tip now this tip it's easy to snap it so I want you to be when you start to wind this go careful before I wind that I'm gonna put some wings on and I'm gonna show you the wings you know I use a wing cutter You can use a grey wing or a brown wing, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to tie it with some brown wings today because they've got a bit of a vein in them and the natural fly is a bit veiny. But this, this is just to show you what the wing cutter does. And this is the wing cutter. It's this little tool with a curved blade, a circular blade almost, with a gap which gets down, the, the, the quill comes through the gap, put it on some newspaper and press down, a bit like a pastry cutter, and it comes out sort of like this. And these, these, are, these would be the wings. And you, we, we would end up, that would be one of the wings, okay? Now, uh, I'm going to get these wings. I've, I've got two brown ones, which I prepared earlier. Here, I'll get these ready. You see those two? Like that. I like the brownie ones because they've got a bit of a vein in it, and as long as the tips are matched up, I'll tie them on now. Now, these... The, the, um, the wing will be about a third a third of the hook shank so it's about there about from where the silk is hanging I get them together like this and I put them on I'm sure you will think that these wings are not very natural when you see them but I will be trimming them shortly okay put a few winds behind and I take each of these stalks back just behind the wing tie them down like that nip it off same with this side back behind tie it down and nip it off I hope I'm not blocking your view but I think you may get the general idea now the wings are like that I'm going to wind the body now you can put a touch of varnish I tend to put it my side because I use my finger the far side which unfortunately can sometimes block your view uh, I'll try not to do that and I will wind the foam up to behind the wings these wings are fairly robust so you can give them a bit of a pull right now that the, the, the foam is there I tie it off now I'm going to rib this foam as I said but some people touch up the mayfly body with a felt pen. They just give it a few touches. You can use various colors, uh, green or black. I, I actually touched this. I don't know if you can see it on this one. The body has just been touched with a felt pen as well as being ribbed. <coughs> okay, I'm going to rib it. And I rib it the opposite way 
to how I wound the body. I try to get even ribs. They can be, it's permissible, if you like, to make the ribs wider as you go up. It's um, not too important, but you can do that. And I'm tying off now. When you rib the wrong way, it can be a teeny bit difficult to tie down the rib, as you probably saw there, because you, your silk, your tying silk, is trying to push the rib back over. However, that was okay. That's been done. And I'm going to, later on, try to make the spread of these tails a bit more permanent, as on the sample and of the flies tied here and I'll show you how I do that <coughs> okay now that I'm there I'm going to put on uh, a thorax uh, I, I like a thorax as you know and um, I, I think a thorax sets off a fly but before I do it I'm going to clip these wings to make them look in my opinion a bit more natural and this is the way I do it Bend them down like that. Let me just try to keep in your camera's vision here. Down the centre of the feather of the wing, we've got the quill. And I'm going to cut down the side of the quill because I think the round wing doesn't look as natural as this shape wing. It's a personal thing. And it's entirely up to you. So what I do is I just give a cut like that on that one. Turn it around a bit more towards me. And I do the same on the other wing. Bear with me. I think the wing, it's a personal thing, looks more natural. Like, like that. Now, um... <coughs> I said a thorax. I use one strand of peacock curl. With peacock, as you probably know, it's got a nice green sheen, a natural colour, and it's got this um, flu on it, the furry bits. Peacock curl is always a bit brittle at the end, so break that off. If you don't, it'll break off when you tie it in. Okay, I'm going to just take my silk back a bit to about there. Tie that on, draw it back a bit to about there, and that's tied in, and now I'm going to just wind it. To be honest with you, I think this really sets off the fly. Probably heard me say all insects have a thorax. I wind behind the wing and in front of the wing. And although I'm going to wind a hackle over this, you can still see it through the, through the, 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 the main hackle. It also helps to keep the wings upright. Okay, that's one tie, another one and another. And I'll nip it off. Now, just a word on these wings. The wings have been cut from a hen cape, from this actual one here. It's a hen chicken cape. And <coughs> I, the, when I use the grey ones, I cut it again from a hen cape, just for you to, to know that. Now, the main hackle, I like a grizzle hackle or a badger, but I'm going to use a grizzle today. Um, it's a, the grizzle is from, well, I think it's from the Plymouth Rock. Uh, when I kept chickens, a Plymouth Rock was a grizzle. So I'm going to select a hackle from here and tie it in. And that, that looks about right to me. So take that hackle out. Sorry, I'm off camera. Back with you. Um, just have a look. Yeah, that looks about the right size. 
and I'll strip off the rubbish down the bottom to give me room to tie it in. Just prepare it, <coughs> as we say. Right, tying in the main hackle, dry fly style, that means wound collar hackle at the front. I put on a figure of eight like this. This makes the hackle secure. It's a little bit difficult sometimes with a long hackle. See the stalk? I'm bending that back so that I can tie it down. This hackle is off a saddle cape. Okay, I bring that to the front and I'm now going to trace that stalk to tie it out. I think I may have been a little bit out of camera there, but I hope it worked okay. I'm cutting out the stalk of the hackle and I'll get back in your vision a bit better, which is about there. I tied in a thorax, in case you missed it, by winding peacock hurl in front of and behind the wings. Okay, now I'm going to wind the hackle. This is the main hackle for the fly, and I put a few turns behind, like this. And I put a few turns in front. You can use a hackle pliers if you wish, but with a long quality hackle like this, I don't need one. Okay, I'm there, so I will just secure that with a couple of winds before I do a proper job of it. Okay, I've done that, so I nip out the hackle. I nip out the surplus. When you do that, always go in with your scissors closed and open it when you're right where you want to be. That way you won't remove any, well you won't remove many of the hackles. It's enough there to tie another small fly. Okay, uh, I'm going to make this a bit more secure. So I draw things back like this and I start to finish the head. While it's like that, I put on my whip finish seen me do a whip finish by hand before I don't really recommend it um, I although I'm I'm happy with it um, the whip finish tool is probably easier for anyone starting off newcomers and it's newcomers I'm aiming at with this series I'm not doing fancy difficult to tie flies I don't think I'm not saying these are easy but um, you know, that's how I like. I'm going to cut the silk again, open to a gape, tight up against the, each side of the silk, tight up against the head, and gently push. Again, you won't remove any hackles. Now, while it's there, I'm going to varnish the head. So I shake my varnish pot. I just paint the head a little. Not too much, I will be clear in the eye, but I don't want to overdo it. I'll be using the varnish again in a moment because I want to help to fix those wings. Now, I'm clear in the eye. I put up a hackle, an old hackle. Always got one lying around on your bench. Put it through twice if you want to. And that clears the eye. One of the main reasons for river or bankside rage, river rage, blocked eyes. Right, the wings. I'm going to try to position them so they look a bit more natural. I bend them down like this so that I can put a blob of varnish down in the centre, down at the roots. When I do that... That helps to fix the wings where I want them. 
I haven't fixed them yet. So what happens now, we put them sort of a bit natural. And now I'm going to look again at these tails because I'm going to try to fix those where I want them. And what I do there, you don't need to do these things obviously, I just give a wipe with a varnish like that. Okay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to rotate it to show you what I've done. You see the angle of the wings and you can see the angle of the tail. Now, if you want to remove one or two of the tails, you can. Doesn't really matter, <coughs> pardon me, but the fish don't seem to mind, so that's okay. I enjoy tying this fly. <laughs> I, sh I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't be as um, get as much pleasure out of tying this fly but um, uh, somehow I do now I think that's a nice fly even though I say it myself wouldn't you be happy if during a mayfly hatch at the river if someone tied one of those on your tippets um, okay that's all I want to show you today and I thank you for watching